You've been told that high LDL cholesterol coats the inside of blood vessels in much the same way that the drain gets clogged by fat. And this is just absurd. High LDL cholesterol levels are in fact associated with longevity. The overwhelming finding of this systematic review of 19 cohort studies with more than 68,000 participants found that people with higher LDL cholesterol levels lived longer. Let's take a look at exactly what LDL is. It's a complex molecule comprised of both lipids and proteins that the body devotes a lot of resources to producing. And cholesterol, often referred to interchangeably and incorrectly referred to interchangeably as LDL, is in fact only one component of LDL. It's both carried as cargo internally and dotted through the outside membrane. So it's clear that LDL is not the same as pure cholesterol. The fact is, however, that LDL particles can be found in atherosclerotic plaques. So does that mean LDL causes atherosclerosis? No. <laughs> Just because two factors coexist doesn't mean that one causes the other. The fact is, as shown by this paper, 75% of patients hospitalised with heart attack have normal levels of LDL. Rather, we've got compelling evidence that the root cause of heart disease is actually this, a blood clot, or more specifically, a thrombosis. Essentially, atherosclerosis is the result of blood clots forming inside blood vessels. To begin with, Red blood cells contain a chemical that is unique to them and only to them, called glycophorin A. And this chemical is not found in any other tissue in the human body. And yet, scientists have been able to prove the presence of this chemical, and therefore red blood cells, by using a stain. And they've found it deep inside atherosclerotic plaques. Of course, blood clots are not just made of red blood cells. They also contain platelets and fibrin, which forms the strands that bind the clot together. And these two have been found buried deep inside atherosclerotic plaques. And the lipid heart hypothesis does not explain this at all. Now, one interesting thing about these clots is that they can occur episodically, over time, one on top of the other. And this then leads to a prediction that atherosclerotic plaques might actually form in layers. And indeed, that is exactly what we find. Here's an example of a single layer plaque that contains a lipid-rich core that's covered by a thick, fibrous connective tissue cap. And here's an example of a plaque with two distinct layers, separate fibrous caps being clearly visible. Hang on, you might say, what about cholesterol-like crystals that we see in plaques? Where does that come from? Well, it doesn't come from LDL. First of all, understand that the LDL in atherosclerosis is contained within things called foam cells. And these foam cells are formed when macrophages ingest damaged LDL. These foam cells store cholesterol that is bound together with fatty acids. And when you bind cholesterol with fatty acids, it makes it form a droplet and they'll remain in a droplet even if it gets released from the macrophage. It won't form a crystal. The thing is, the cholesterol found in foam cells cannot and does not lead to the crystalline deposits that we see. Red blood cells, on the other hand, can. Their outer membrane contains more free sterols, including cholesterol, than any other cell in the body. And not surprisingly, they're abundant in blood clots. <laughs> 